Hello everybody and welcome back to another episode of Microsoft Flight Simulator and today we're going to be up in the Baron G58 and we're also going to be using a third party application that I did a review on a while back called Sky4 Sim. Um, I want to touch base on this application once again. I really, really use it a lot. I think it's a fantastic application and I think it's something that many of you may enjoy so stick around. If you are interested in acquiring any of my Overkill's tutorial guides for Microsoft Flight Simulator, please consider joining me on Patreon. Patreon subscribers level tier 2 and above have access to all of my guides, as well as any future updates and future guides that will be coming down the road. Link to Patreon can be found in the description below. Okay, so real quick, I want to make sure that before we get into this, I touch on something that like the comments got blown up with last time. So what is this first off? Sky for SimPad is basically a kneeboard. It is a digital kneeboard. You can follow your flight plan. You have satellite GPS tracking. You can create your flight plan directly from the world map. You can see terrain elevations in your flight plan that you need to avoid. So you can set your altitude limit. You can set your target cruise speed, which will then change your duration. You can store uh, documents, screenshots, pilots operational handbooks, uh, PDF documentation within it and access it. Um, you know, it, it, you can access the uh, um, bush trips in it. It has its own logbook in it now, so it can track your flight hours from uh, airport to airport destination as long as Sky Sim was or Sky for Sim was open the entire time. Now, the why am I throwing all this out real quick is because there are other apps that can do just as much, if not more, in some cases. So one of those being, for example, the one that came up the most often the last time I reviewed this was Little Nav Map. I want to make it very clear, guys. Little Nav Map is completely free. It is free. Where this application is about just just shy of 17 US dollars. Okay. Now, what I'm going to also make very clear, Little Nav Map probably does a little more. It's probably a bit more robust. Um, it's extremely capable application, a very amazing piece of software. Um, but in my personal opinion, it is not anywhere near as user friendly and it is definitely not beginner friendly. I, I would not call little nav map beginner friendly. Uh, it has a very large and very steep learning curve in my personal opinion. Um, we're each welcome to our own. Um, and sky for sim, in my opinion is, um, a much more simpler app to use. It is much more user friendly. It, it uh, the ins and out of it ins and outs of it are easier to discover and therefore get more familiar with. Um, and it's just a very simple application that can be ran from multiple browser sources. So you can have it hosted on your, um, you know, your, your flight simulator computer and have the browser up, which we're going to, you're going to see an example of the browser here, uh, have the browser up on a Kindle or something of that nature. Um, and I just want to make sure that they are, that you guys understand they are both wonderful applications. This is just a review of Sky4 Sim. I am going to be doing a full tutorial series of Little Nav Map once I feel more comfortable with it. Like I said, in my opinion, it's got a very steep learning curve. Um, there's, there's a lot of ins and outs with it. There's a lot of pieces that you can miss, and there's a lot of things that can sometimes get a little confusing and cumbersome, in my opinion. But a wonderful, free application. Yes, it is. Okay, so just want to make sure you throw that out there. Uh, I got the comments the last time I did this vi uh, video on Sky for Sim got pounded pretty hard. So it and it was always um, LMP. So anyway, now Sky for Sim, as I said, is just under seventeen dollars. Here's an idea of what it looks like. Now you can have the um, pad both. So this is a display of what it looks like inside the simulator, which I'll show you that. Or you can have it as a browser, which to give you guys an idea is right here. This is the main menu for the application. Same thing you'll see in the in game. Um, they always post the latest news when you first launch the application. So this is the first la uh, launch of the app. It also updates automatically. Um, you have the option. It'll tell you when you first launch it. Hey, you have an update. You tell it to update. Boom. It installs relaunches. You're good to go. Caught up. Um, constantly adding new features. Here's the pilot logbook and the MSFS bush trips that we were talking about. Um, so that's pretty nice. Um, and then obviously, um, just the, the, 
Um, overall functionality, as I said before, I think is very, very handy. Now, if we go to products and Sky for SimPad, you can find a bit more information. There's that price point we were talking about. I do not believe there is a free trial of it. Um, I kind of wish there was because I, I think it would help solidify what I'm trying to tell you guys. But that's okay. Um, but you, uh, as you can see here, it has a ton of functionality. If you guys just read down the line, there is a ton of functionality just on the website alone, much less when you absolutely get into the, or actually get into the application, which is what we're going to do right now. Okay, so as I said, um, this is the main menu. This is the same thing that you'll see when you, if you open it from the sim. Now, if you guys wanna see what it looks like from the simulator, we can just come down here and get that out of the way. Come here, and there it is right there. And just like we discussed, exact same layout, okay? I just prefer to have it external because I have a monitor directly above my primary monitor, so it makes it real easy to manipulate it and, and see it. So let's go ahead and repause that so we don't get the audio and come back up. And now let's go into continue. So here we're at Birmingham in Alabama, and we're just gonna take a quick flight in the Baron G58, create a flight plan. I'm gonna show you guys how quickly you do it and, and, and how really awesome it truly is um, as far as the simplicity of it, okay? So the first thing that we wanna do is we do want to go into our menu. And just real quick, here's some of those options that I was telling you guys before. I'm not gonna go through everything. I will definitely throw the uh, link to my previous video in the description if you guys are interested in watching that. Uh, I go very much so into detail on what this application does and what the advantages of it are. Uh, two new features here are all of the bush trips that are currently uh, existent with inside of Microsoft Flight Simulator can be accessed directly from here. Um, and then as well as uh, the pilot logbook. Again, as long as you go from airport to airport and the Sky Force Sim is running the entire time, uh, you'll have your departure, your arrival, your aircraft, and the duration of flight. So it's a nice little logbook. And I know not too long ago, a bunch of us lost our logbook with a certain update. Uh, so, you know, keep that in mind. Um, and then again, you have access to your airports, your weather, your flight plan documents that we were talking about earlier, bunch of really awesome stuff. So let's go to flight plan. We're going to go to create the nice thing about the browser is when you go to the browser, you have access to the up top keyboard here. I think we're at Kilo Bravo hotel, Mike, if memory serves, come down, hit enter. Yes, we are. And we're going to set that as our departure. Okay. Now, before we do anything else, let's go create the rest of our flight plan. So what we're going to do now is we're going to go back to the world map. And you can see there's our little flag right here indicating our departure location. And so now it's just a matter of picking where we want to go. So let's see here. Um, <laughs> I've never been down to Alabama. So let's see here. Let's sort of come down, maybe down here to the river. And let's see here. What else we got? I'm looking for sightseeing points anything cool down here again i don't know the areas i'm going strictly by the satellite imagery just looking for anything that might be neat fun for us to go and tool around in maybe another little airport maybe a vor station there we go there's a vor station right there yeah let's come down here what's down here in this one a little flat plains but i'm sure we'll see something along the way um, let's see here. That's some pretty good distance. That could be kind of boring to fly straight down over there, huh? So let's come down here first. Let's grab this one. Come here, take a peek. And let's see here. What do we got over here? More of the river. Maybe follow the river all the way down. Actually, yeah. So maybe come down here to the river we'll fly over the vor station what do we got down here that looks like some beautiful guys so green so green so you come down check out this one over here and hey we even got an airport right here that's what we'll do right there so you know what let's uh Let's delete that. You just left click on it to delete it. Nice and easy. And let's set one right here. Just double click again. All right, so the next thing we can do is go to our filter menu here. 
turn the airport on and we can see where we want to go. So now we've got our flight route set up, right? We got our legs and look at all this. It brings up such cool information, right? So we've got our legs in here. We're going to uh, KSEM. So let's turn the filters back off for a minute. Do, 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 do. There we go. KSEM. So we're going to go back to our flight plan, right? And then what I'm going to do here is type in KSEM. KBHM is set as the departure. Now search for your destination and set it as the arrival. So we're going to hit enter. Set as arrival. And there it is. So we have our departure up here. We have our arrival down here. All that's going to be stored in the logbook. Here is our elevation of each. So, and the orange section is each leg of the flight. So as we cross through each leg, boom, we just simply check it off the leg, right? And it lets you know where you're at in the flight. We can set our target cruise speed if we want. Let's see, for the Baron, let's call it, uh, let's see, Baron G58. I think we're going to be right around 136 knots, ideally, give or take. Okay. Adjust your duration. We're looking at about 56 minutes of flight time, 127 nautical miles of flight. And that's it. Like, <laughs> it's so simple to use. And then if you need to, you have your GPS tracking right up here. So this is great for your aircraft maybe that don't have the navigation systems that some of the aircraft have. Um, you know, your, your Garmin's and your G1000's, et cetera. And, you know, they only have the old steam gauges and a compass kind of thing. So it makes it really easy to take these kind of flights in aircraft that you normally maybe wouldn't feel comfortable with in an area that you're unfamiliar with. Um, it's just, it's another nice, really awesome tool. So we're going to go ahead and get started. We're going to take our flight. We're going to fly from Birmingham down to, uh, uh, KSEM. You know, I should probably find out what the heck that airport is. And so let's use our application to do it. We're going to go to airports here. I'm just going to simply type in KSEM. Oop. No, I'm not. <laughs> it helps if I put my finger in the right spot. KSEM, so we're getting the real weather information. There it is down there. And let's find out more about it. General, let's see here. KSEM, name Craig Airport is what it is. All right. Craig Airport. Never heard of Craig Airport. But we even get our runway information. Can tell me anything that I need to know about it. There's our comms for it, our ILS for it, ILS for runway 33 if we need it. Um, and then, of course, as we saw before, the weather information, current meet our information. Really awesome app. And again, very simple to navigate. It's very simple. So let's get moving. All right, my friends, let's fly a plane. Do, 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 do. All right, so let's see here. Let's zoom on in a little bit here. Left and right batteries come on. Turn the AV on. Well, let's see here. Nope, we've got our engine readout. All right, fuel looks good. Fuel flow, manifold pressure. RPM, all right, and let's check our lights down here. Where are you? Oh, nav light. Come on, nav lights, beacon lights, let everyone know that we're getting ready to roll here. Normally we bleed the fuel valves here. Let's turn our, fu our fuel valves on. There we go. Come on, why aren't you turning? There it goes, okay. Cal flaps open for engine start. Set that mixture to full rich. We're doing both engines today, uh, just because of my configuration at the moment. I'm using the Thrustmaster Warthog. Make sure fuel flow peaks. Kick that thr for throttle back. Fuel pumps off. It's been a while since I've flown the Baron, so if I do a couple things off, forgive me. All right, let's see if we can just get one of these guys rolling here. There she is, coming alive. I'd love to see an improvement mod for the Baron. That'd be so cool. Let's see, engine two. Two engines alive. I'm down to about a thousand RPMs. Ish. There we go. 
All right, avionics master on. Okay, set our barometric pressure. Looking good. Oh, I didn't mean to turn that back on. When did I turn that back on? Okay, and it's ice. Pedo heat, we are close to the runway, so we'll go ahead and turn it on here. Taxi light can come on now. Do 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 do. I think we're good to go because we're just gonna fly out the window. Okay, and finally now let's set our radio real quick. At least set the transponder. And da, 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 da. let's make sure we're set. We are set for 1200, so we're just gonna set that to on for the moment. And let me check our wind direction here. Winds are 190 at seven. So let's see here. Make sure I got my runway right. Niner zero, one four zero. Yep. All right. So yeah, we're right next to the runway that I need to be on. Now, why do we have low volts? Oh goodness gracious! I forgot to turn the alternators on. Oh my gosh, that's why we check everything, right? All right. Let's see about flying this little lady. Rudders control. Back my zoom out a little bit. All right, flight controls responding. All right, let's fly a plane. Da, 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 da. That should be the parking brake right down there. It is turn, baby, turn. And I turned the wrong way. Good thing we're the only one here, right? Oh, I tapped that brake. This is the problem with the default aircraft. We all know it. Beautiful morning. Beautiful morning. the taxiway here. Turn, baby, turn. Come on. Come on, come on. Here we go. Looking good. Real good. All right, I'm gonna hold us here for just a second. All right, so we are finally back where we need to be here. And as you can see here, it tracks the aircraft's position very, very well to real life. Or to the real world scenery, I should say. I mean, look at the threshold line. I know it's kind of hard to see, but we're on the threshold line at both locations here, both in the sim and on the map. So we're gonna go ahead and take the runway again. We're already configured. And let's get rolling. Take off power set. 85 knots rotation speed coming up. It's got 
positive rate, gear up. And the other thing we can do, let me try to do this quickly, is we can hit the little airplane icon and it'll follow our plane. I came off the center line of the runway here trying to tap that. But as you can see, once again, it's tracking the aircraft very, very well. Flaps up. Pass the marker. All right. Came a little off course here, so I'm going to come back around. RPM is back to about 2300. It's a nice little cruise. Whoa, what was that? Bouncy day, huh? I love it when the weather's like this, though. I love it when you start getting the bounces and the shakes and the... Intensity of the flight increases. Come on, baby. We're doing about 20 knots faster than uh, what we plotted for, so it should make for an early arrival into Craig. All right, so we should be just about arriving on our first leg. Should be right down there. Whew, come on, baby girl. Stop bouncing around on me. Whoa, I didn't even do that. It's like I knew we needed to turn. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Kind of a cool little landmark that actually worked out pretty nicely. Very easy to spot. All right, and then if we come up to our flight plan, we just check off the first leg there. So now we know we're at our second one here. Go back to our map. Watch the plane get kicked around for a minute. Let's go, uh, we'll keep flying till we get to the next one. Took her down a little bit lower, do some sightseeing. So green. I'm from the desert, if you guys can't tell. Looking for about 2,000. All right, let's continue on.
It's about to cross over our second leg, or to our third leg. Went a little wide on that one. There's the perfect landmarks. Trying to stay under the clouds. Keeping the view okay. There's a marker. Probably got too close to the airport, but that's alright. Go to our flight plan, cross off that second leg. Now we're on to the third. Let's continue onward. Alright, coming up on the uh, next one here. I think we're coming close to our final leg, right? Yeah, just about. So that's the third leg complete. So now we're about to turn on to that final leg. Go ahead and start making our turn early. Beautiful stuff. Alright, and the next one uh, will be getting ready to land, so uh, let's uh, move forward.
All right, that is basically our final leg completed. And let's make sure we have our barometric altitude set correctly. Let's get some wind information, 144 at 6. So we're actually almost right in line with where we need to be. Landing lights back on. Flaps coming in. Gear coming down. Brought back to full. RPM's coming up. Collapsed full. Approach speed. Little shallow. Wheels down, flaps up, and we can even use our map here to figure out where we want to park our, our plane here. It's like we're going to taxi out to the right up here. All right, let's clear those landing lights. Taxi light back on. Hello. Transponder back to the on position. Okay. goodness for differential braking I'm telling you so that is my review of the sky for sim 
application. Now, when we park the aircraft here, we're going to check a look at the flight log here. Um, but I really hope you guys found the value in it like I have. I really, really enjoy the simplicity. I enjoy its ease of use. I enjoy the features that it does have. You know, some of these applications get so robust, like little nav map, like I said, it does a ton, has profiles specifically designed for each aircraft. Um, it has all the GPS features and all things like that. But there's just, you know, sometimes I, I just, I'm, I'm not necessarily looking for all that detail, you know, for flight simulation with some of these flights, I like to be able to just get up and fly like we did today. Today's a perfect example of how I like to use Sky for Sim. You know, but it has all those other features that are within sight of it. You know, the uh, the PDF viewers and things like that, checklist, your meet our information. It's got a ton of great information that's available to us. So um, I really recommend it, guys. I really, really recommend this. So let's see here. Let's park the aircraft here for just a second here. Let's set that parking brake. I'm going to go ahead and pause the simulator so we kill the audio back there. Let's uh, set this little guy right here back to our... Um, screen size give me just a second here oops wrong one there we go it would help there we go it helps if I'm clicked on the right one all right stretch the screen there we go and then if we go over here back to our menu let's take a look at the pilot logbook and there we go. So we did 20 minutes of flight now. The reason why that was 20 minutes was for your benefit, guys. It's because I accelerated the, the simulator time, um, as you guys saw in the video. So that is not realistic time, but it gives you a perfect example. We got the KBHM to KSEM flying the Baron G58 with the Kenmore livery with a flight uh, time of 20 uh, minutes. And we can even go to details here and we get a bit more information. Gives you your takeoff time, flight duration, again, distance, total distance flown. So actually we did shave quite a bit off that. So that's actually I guess a little bit. Actually, I guess that is accurate. Never mind. So that would make more sense. Uh, maximum altitude, 3,400 feet. Landing smoothness. It landed at 112 feet. And we did get a pretty good bounce on that. So that wasn't a great landing of mine. But anyway, it gives you all this wonderful pieces of information. Again, in a very uh, simple and easy to use interface. I really hope you guys enjoyed this. And just in case anyone says it, no, I was not paid to do this. I just thought it'd be fun to touch on it again. It's been a while. As always, guys, be sure to hit that like and subscribe button. Ring that bell for notification of future content. Let me know how you're doing with the Sky for Sim app or what applications you prefer. And as always, be safe, be healthy, and I'll see you in the next one.